Hello there. In this video, we're going to discuss a graphical interpretation of derivatives, which in general is just a fractional interpretation of fractional derivatives. But in the case of just ordinary derivatives, for example, if we take y is equal to x squared, its derivative 2x and its second derivative 2, we can't really see a graphical transition in between these functions, namely a parabola, a line, and a constant. So what, so how does this transformation undergo? For example, how can you get to from this parabola to this line? Well, if we sort of look at this, well, these points must come down and these points must come down as well. And if we look at the next transformation, then these points must come down and these points must come up. But in what fashion do those points sort of transition? So to sort of demonstrate this, we're going to be looking at the fractional derivative of x to the m, which we've already found or extended by the factorial definition, uh, gamma of n plus 1 divided by gamma n plus 1 minus alpha times x to the n minus alpha. We have not proven this using the definition of derivatives. We've just pretty much analytically extended or assumed that this property will hold. We'll prove this property eventually uh, using analytical methods, but let us assume that this is true. To illustrate this, we'll be focusing on the function y is equal to 1 6 x cubed, whose derivative is going to be 1 half x squared, whose second derivative is equal to x, whose third derivative is equal to 1. We're going to be comparing the transitions in between these derivatives and sort of get a feel for what's going on in the fractional derivative world. All right, so to demonstrate this transition in between derivatives, we're going to be writing a script in MATLAB to sort of simulate that transition for us. So we don't have to manually calculate all those gamma values, which we pretty much have to do numerically anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by just setting up a common script in MATLAB um, that will close all the figures and clear the console um, so that I don't have any other things uh, that will pretty much interrupt or disturb my focus. So what this program is going to do is going to calculate the fractional derivatives of f of x is equal to x to the n. So monomials pretty much. And we're going to be focusing on the integer n is equal to 3. So we're going to create a couple of variables. We're going to be creating a symbolic variable x. And we're also going to be calculating a numerical value, which I'm going to call xx which I'm going to define on the domain negative 1, 3 with incremental distance uh, 0 0.1. So I'm going to be using the symbolic variable to compare our basic derivatives, namely the integer derivatives of uh, 1 6 x cubed, uh, 1 half x squared, x, and the unit function, which I'm not going to plot. This I'm going to be using to calculate the fractional derivatives of all of the intermediary decimal derivatives uh, between the integers. So I'm going to open up a figure and then I'm going to transition through all of the derivatives. So I'm going to transition, I'm going to let AL correspond to alpha. So I'm going to go from 0 in increments of 0 0.5 and I'm going to go all the way down to n. So why do I choose to end at n? Because this is going to be forcing the last derivative graphed to be c, not 0. Fractional derivatives from constants to 0 uh, do not typically behave uh, nicely, but we'll bring into this discussion uh, a little bit later. So this is going to be our for loop that we're going to transition through. So our fractional derivative, or our computational uh, value of y is going to be equal to 1 sixth times gamma of n plus 1. I'll put the big constant, the gamma constant in parentheses. So gamma of n plus 1 divided by gamma n plus 1 minus alpha. So that's my constant times x. 
Now we need to use a dot operator in MATLAB because x is a vector and we need to exponentiate those corresponding elements of my vector by a certain constant, namely n minus alpha. So that is my numerical approximation to my fractional derivative. And then I'm going to plot x, y, and I'm going to be plotting them uh, with blue lines. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on this graph and I'm going to show the other graphs so I can sort of see the transition between them. All right, so I'm going to hold on what? So I'm going to easy plot uh, 1 sixth uh, times x cubed. I'm going to easy plot 0 0.5 times x squared. And I'm going to easy plot x. I'm going to plot my all of my derivatives on the same interval, uh, namely negative 1, 3 for x and negative 1, 3 for y. And let's see, for the title, I'm going to show, uh, say, negative, let's do, let's plot the alpha value. So alpha value is equal to num to string of alpha. So we can see where we are in the transitional period. And we can sort of ignore this plot. So it says suppress uh, in all files. All right, so uh, once I do that, I'm going to draw all of this at that moment and nothing in between. So I can sort of not draw one, then one, then one, then one. I pretty much draw all of them at the same exact time. And so that it doesn't transition too quickly, I'm going to pause briefly, say for four tenths of a second, um, so that I can see the transitional things in a very nice way. So I'm also going to put the grid on as well, just to make this a little bit more neater. And then I'm going to plot this and see what it shows me. So let's start this plot up and see what happens. So here is my derivative. So we're starting uh, with the original. So this light blue graph is our cubic. And notice this part and the left part are both converging up to my quadratic. Now this left part uh, is decreasing where the right part blue is increasing up to my yellow line. And now what happens in the next transition from my linear constant to a horizontal constant, notice we get this very twisty behavior and it's pretty much converging to a horizontal line as alpha approaches 3. Remember their original function is a cubic, so that their derivative of a cubic is just a non-zero constant. So let's just watch that uh, just again, just to make sure we got it all. So our cubic, originally shown in light blue, is transitioning to our quadratic in red. So this is increasing, this blue is increasing on the left-hand side. And then once it slightly goes above this parabola, just a tad bit, and then decreases downwards on the left and increases on the right. And then once we go past the second derivative, notice that this point here at zero uh, tends to not be differentiable. Um, but that's a discussion for a later time. But pretty much this part on the, horse, the vertical axis pretty much goes to zero, and this point here at zero uh, becomes a removable discontinuity, if you want to think of it that way. Because it's like a zero to the zero power, some people say it's one, some people say it's undefined. Um, but this pretty much ties into the whole entire terminal point of a fractional derivative, and the terminal point actually matters. <clears throat> um, but zero is overall an issue in a lot of computations, um, but we'll discuss how to sort of remove this issue in our in our definitions a little bit later. But that's pretty much a demonstration of how uh, the derivatives are just transformations of functions. And the fractional derivatives really give a nice transitional perspective in between these integer derivatives that would otherwise not be intuitive if you didn't have fractional derivatives to sort of illustrate that.